<laughs> Here you are. Where'd your other one go? Crows. Always the crows. Always the crows on my walks. They're always in front of me, behind me, flying all over. This place is crow heaven. <laughs> Uh, if you were a mountain man trapper, that was a bad thing. The crow are in the area were being watched. It's beautiful today again, guys. It's just day two of pretty. I don't know how else to say it. I hear about everybody having these crazy storms and people getting hurt almost dying some died monsoons hurricanes I just haven't seen it not here even in the winter <laughs> it was bad winter it was bad but overall I <laughs> every time it was supposed to have this insane fucking rainstorm that was gonna you know, take us out, the whole west. I can get you in there one time. Yeah. Uh, take us all out. I remember going in the backyard and saying, no, it's not. It's not going to hit us. I had a gut feeling it was solid. Was that Mandela effect? I call it a farmer's intuition mostly, but... I can always tell the weather, but in this place, it is unpredictable. <laughs> However, it does seem unusual that if you really don't want it to happen, it won't. Because I had that the entire winter. I was like, I don't feel like it right now. I don't feel like dealing with a, a storm. Although I love storms, people I love rain. Coming from desert country, we had to barter for fucking water <laughs> in the Central Valley, California. We were always short because all the water was going to L.A. I don't know about this place. Obviously, they've got a lot of water. In fact, they've got a little greedy and they've stored it all up and now the dams are going to crash in. Um, again, I always go back to that guy I had met at my old workplace, the stranger, who was a... Uh, who was an engineer, or he worked with the engineers. He was a masonry guy. He did all the structural stuff, and he would argue with them all the time. And he says when he woke up here, um, he could tell that everything was fucked. He says it all, it's all gonna blow. The way, uh, all the, the dams, he says the dams were gonna go in California. He, he told me this months ago guys and I made a video on it about the actual first physical person that I had met with the Mandela effect the person actually knew all of it in fact he was telling me I didn't have to tell him nothing I didn't even do a comparison he was just telling me and I knew 100% everything he was saying was correct I was just really fascinated and it was the first person I've ever met with the effect and I we shook hands man and it was like I almost couldn't stop talking to him it was, it was great man of course so yeah I, I thought it was phenomenal and um, I just want to share that right it turns on <laughs> turns this shit on right when I start filming here we go with the plane <sighs> man Yeah, I get used to it, but it don't mean I like it. <laughs> so I think overall we've had a fantastic chat last night. I didn't wake up whitewashed, which was good, because normally I, I wake up late noon whitewashed. I woke up, I had pretty solid memories. I guess we, we, we laughed it up pretty good, so my brain kept it. Keep watching me. My brain kept it. This is good. I like that. I just, I've been feeling good for two days. 
unusually good. Yeah, my muscles were sore this morning again. Um, somebody suggested that I might be low on magnesium, um, some other things, but and potassium, but I make my fruit shakes. I probably have a, more of a nutritious diet than most people. I am not missing any of my vitamins because I make the fruit shakes with different varieties, especially banana, pina, uh, binary right there. Is a, Cause the potassium, I learned out in the Navy when I got those calf, calf cramps, I would, you know, have to eat a banana, I would dabble down the potassium. And then I put vitamins in my in my drinks. I add iron. No, I mean I add uh, copper because I'm already negative. Oh, and I also add vitamin D because there seems to be this trend going around. Not trend, but a lot of doctors are repeating the same thing. And I've got that in my notes. I've asked people that with and without the Mandela effect, what did your doctor say you needed in your diet? Everyone. 100% Emmy or not have all said their doctor said they're low on vitamin D and it's unusual to me to hear that because when I, I got my test results back from my doctor and she says that my cholesterol was high and she was gonna push she's gonna send me now I'm not asking for these pills this is the VA guys they just send them to you she's gonna send me blood pressure pills and um, cholesterol pills and all this stuff to check. I'm like, <laughs> lady, there is no, almost no fat in my diet nowadays. I have coffee with cream in the morning. That's the, that's it. I do a split coffee and milk with, with the uh, organic honey, and there is no cholesterol. Sure, I eat meat, but I also eat a lot of very healthy things with lots of vegetables. And what's up with the vitamin D? I add it to my drink every day. Dairy is a regular part of my diet. I mean, when I fall back on what my primaries are, obviously, it's my coffee concoction to clean out the livers. And I drink milk in the daytime, healthy. And then I drink beer at night. Everything is sterile or pasture. I don't trust anything here. And remember, everything that I do is I, I use a coffee pot to filter the water with first. Then I store it, pour it through the uh, filter itself. So it's like double, double. And then I use that same water to make coffee. So it's going through a filter again. So it eventually goes through multiple filters by the time it gets into my stomach. So it's, it's not 100%, but it's pretty damn clean compared to what it is so a lot of these things I'm hearing from her I'm like why there's nothing wrong with me lady you said it yourself I looked younger she was shocked that I was in my 30s again from going up to 50 now I look like I'm in my 30s and so all only thing she <laughs> sends me the same zombie letter and wanting to put me right back on the same medications I'm laughing because I know it's incorrect it's a misdiagnosis, and I can tell it's almost like she's reading a script that I have to have it. Right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I have to have it, and I don't need it. I don't need it. I know that 100% because I'm using myself as a control. I'm using myself as a control in this Mandela-affected fucking place quantum jumping home, time travel, quantum shifting, whatever you want to call it nowadays. I just call it quantum jumping, man. So, I don't know if we jumped today. Usually my memory will kind of give me clues and how I slept, but I actually woke up at a reasonable time, early. Did my shower, my workout. Checked out some emails, sent out a couple things to people, um, seeing how things are going. Then I see if there's anything new that comes up. Like a person with this effect putting out a video. And then I go back and see how many months ago this person was. And I date it because there was this push point back around this time, this month of last year. This was like I call it the launching month. There was stuff before this, always was, 
but nothing, nothing to this degree. It wasn't even that. It was mostly flat earth junk. But these are people that probably immediately woke up earlier, and of course, how the brain works. And, and from my notes, the majority of these people are correct. They're correct. That's why I don't put down Flat Earth. I just don't like the name, like Mandela Effect. I don't like the name either. It got coined by somebody who's spinning. But we have it now. We use it as a reference point. And like Danny likes to use it on the talk, Texas Danny. He likes to say the quantum jump, and I like that word myself. It's just more appropriate, because that's what we're doing. We're jumping, jumping, jumping. Our skulls are changing. You can't deny that. And even the skeptics that don't see it, well, I, they don't make sense to me anyway. They themselves are an anomaly to me. I, I can't. <laughs> How you can't look up and see the obvious things or look around you with the corruption and how things are over almost to the point where it's just hilarious. Hilarious. And I'm really happy to have individuals in the community that have their own style of Kung Fu. I use that reference because everything to me is is that methodology it was it's your power base it's your ability it's your magic strength it's your superhero stuff and it's so simple to some people they could see things that nobody else and then express it verbally or throw a film clip on if we're not able to do that they show the evidence firsthand and it's amazing to me and then we get people that do the web searches and they can get past the spinners. And they can go straight to the sites where people are having sincere, you know, hey, this is my this is my two cents. This is it, you know, this is the boatman gave me the change and I got in here and I'm using it as a joke. And uh, I know what's going on. And here we are. Walking, talking, thinking, cracking this thing wide open. I was watching one individual who made an observation. I'm not gonna say the name because this person might not want their name out there. But this observation to me was fucking awesome. This person had noticed during uh, the Pledge of Allegiance that Banka, whatever the fuck her name is, Ubanka, I don't give a shit. She should be fucking home watching her kids. Or yeah, I should, <laughs> I'm not a fan, I'm sorry guys. She had crossed her heart to the far left. And then the uh, son, I don't know whose son, fuck, they all bang each other. It could, be, it could be Trump's kid, it could be her, I don't know. This place is weird. They all do their weird shit to each other. But what's interesting was he, the, the, the kid that is, had put his hand over his center heart. That's how he remembers it. She puts it to the far left because that's how she remembered it. And then he <laughs> looked like a fool and I wouldn't check it out. He looked like a, like he was trying to like, what do I do? Ah, uh. So he throws his shit a little bit to the left. Like we're her, like he had put himself in the middle between the both of them. Like he knows and he, he don't eat the signal. It was a hilarious signal that he had given out with his fucking hand over his left heart. He has the memory. These are observations that people with us can make. Just something so simple as a thought. It was a muscle memory he had immediately to put it over his left heart. She did the same. Hers almost looked deliberate. Like I'm telling you right now that I jumped here. I'm a golden ticketer. I got here and I'm gonna ride this shit all the way through to my fucking throne, she's saying. Well, don't always work that way. Because you got others like us that woke up. We're not in the elite, but we're soldiers, sailors, fighters, rockers, just people. And we know about it too. We know how to manipulate and change things ourselves. Dude. 
Sorry guys, I had to shut off the uh, camera for a second. Take myself another path over here. I'll explain it why here in a second. I had a little talk with somebody. And uh, if you watched my video the other day, you probably know who that I talked to. I'll explain that in just a minute. Some things don't fly in my book, don't fly in my world. I don't care where I am. If I see something like that, I'm gonna fix the problem. I don't sit around. Mm hmm. Give me a shot. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't make this up. It's on that rock where I found the shoe. So I had a have a quick talk with somebody. It was the pasture. So we were we were walk talking, and um, I saw him show up. I'm sorry. I saw him show up. And he's doing his um, thing with his basketball. He even brought, brings a fucking like radio, a jukebox, plays plays music. And you know, like I said, I'm not I'm not gonna accuse anybody of something bad. I'm not doing that. But I want to make sure he knew that I kind of I'm in the area. If there was ever any problems that I hear about. This fucking pagan's going to have to, I don't know, have a talk. Now, I got nothing against his book. I got nothing against his man of faith, man. I got no problem with that. But you go using that shit for evil. It ain't working with me, man. I don't play that game. My soul's way too old for that shit. So we had a quick talk, guys. I had to take a different path. I kind of told him, I'm, I walk here all the time, man. Just letting you know. You've been watching me, and you know that I've been walking this path every day. And you know that I can see what's going on, just in case you're wondering. I'm not stupid. I want to know what his intentions were. Are you really teaching them kids? What are you teaching them kids, man? You teaching them the word of God? What are you teaching them, man? It says he's showing them how to play basketball. So it looks like to me, them kids look like they already know how to play basketball. They've been doing it, man. They've been doing it for a long time. You're an old man huffing and puffing. What do you really want, man? Are you teaching them the word of God? What are you teaching, man? We didn't really have any correct answers, and I already knew what was going on. I could see it in his face. So I let him know if I find out anything else going on, man. We're we'll gonna have a talk. Well, he took offense to it and took his basketball and left. Was, That's where you're going, man. I'm with you, dude. Hey, teach the kids how to play fucking basketball. That's all you're here for. Why would you walk away like this? I got nothing against you, man. I got nothing against what you're doing, man. If you're doing something from the heart, have a great time, man. I'll wave at you, and I always wave at you when I come through here. But why you got to leave? Why are you worried so much? He left. He'll probably tell the other people at this church. Or maybe not. Because maybe he, uh, maybe they'll, they'll kind of figure some shit out. But it ain't happened on my watch. I raise kids by myself. I raise children, and I'm happy they're grown ups, man. And I mean children. I mean, my, my daughter and all her friends, and my son and all her friends, and I'm seeing them. They're doing their uh, online media stuff, and they're doing good. Some of them are getting their military training. 
all, pretty much all my son's friends, I, I drove them down to the recruiter's office. They're all doing their duty. They're all serving. My daughter's going to be going to college. She'll be doing her thing. She's still rocking her shit. So I raised children. And I did it under celibacy. That way them kids have 100%. And so when I see a fucking predator, predator, piece of shit, go sniffing around fucking children's playgrounds and shit, mm, I know it. I can feel it. I know where they're looking. I know what they're doing. I got no problem approaching them and saying, hi, how you doing, man? What's going on? Which one's yours? Oh, none of them are yours. You just watching them? It's unusual. You enjoying the park? Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> you got to take care of our children, man. We got to take care of our kids. They're our future. And a lot of them have the Mandela effect. They just don't know it because they're, they don't remember the, all the old changes. They, they could be shifting too and not know about what we know because we just know it. Some of them do. Some of them are aware of it. <laughs> Young teenagers, they send me fucking. Uh, some of them send me. Uh, the, they send me uh, codes and shit for the, the scramble. I think it's fucking hilarious. I think it's fun. I, I enjoy the shit out of it, wholeheartedly. And it's all just fun and games. And people should should treat children like that. Should treat adults like that. It, everybody should treat each other good and have fun. And that. I, it's just these, this place. I've seen more predators. A joke about the wolf in, in the new Bible. Mm. And that's kind of what I'm seeing with these predators, especially hanging around areas. There's a lot of slime balls, man. They joke about, what was it, one Christian fucking... Zealot was saying, <coughs> the wolf, and this is an enemy community, <coughs> the wolf had had to have killed that lamb to wear that skin to hide out. Slam in the, the book here. And then there's the uh, people here slamming the Christians about the, the lion and, and all the old stories that I was raised with, a lot of you were raised with. But again, I wasn't raised with it. I heard it from my grandfather. I like the pagan stuff. My dad, we always celebrated Odin and then the old gods, the Norse gods. I stick with the old history, man. It's always safer. You're never at war. You never hear... <laughs> there hadn't been a war in a long time with pagans, believe me. It's all Abrahamic religions, okay? So that's the best thing about it. Usually people with the old Nordic religions, well, yeah, we're more into the forest and adapting ourselves and overcoming situations and using the challenges and because if somebody asked me what, what, what is my definition of God what is my definition of God if I were to be in God's brain what would it look like would it be a man sitting in a cloud with his finger up doing the old touch right touching down and hitting that human man's finger no nah, man if I were to dissect what God is he would be this um, archaic way of thinking. It would be a set of, how would you put it? It would be files in a computer. It would be, it, it, it would be a brain in sections. And I think I've talked about this before. It would be a brain in sections, the old archaic way of thinking, where every emotion would be separate from each other. It would be like a living computer with random sets of reactions to emotions in a certain emotional field. Love is love. Hate, it would be hate. Warrior would be the warrior. It would basically be, God would be a schizophrenic. He would be able to snap, or she would be able to snap into a new, a new way of protection or love or giving or any situation you would follow yourself into in a normal human way except we have them all together right however we are exactly the same way because we pick and choose our emotions as we walk around the same way that's where i get the idea from so if you were to have a pantheon of gods which represents each emotion freya frey 
love, uh, artistry, then you would have warriors, then you have the warrior's father, then you would have the wanderer, you would have all these elements of a way of thinking. If you were to take all of those pantheons of gods and combine them together, you would form one brain. It would be like a human brain in split sections. And so that's how I, I perceive the early thought of, of the old pagan idea and philosophy. And those people that would follow that tradition would pick one over the other of an emotional path to follow. The warrior would always take Thor's path and train, train, train and go out and seek adventure and constantly battle and battle with a full respect knowing that you can come back anytime you can. As long as you want to live, you can always come back. The goal is to go into battle, not to, they've missed, the Christians have changed it in all different dimensions. The idea is to want to live and to know that you will live. By wanting to live, you want to live. So that's why I say when you commit suicide, you've given up your rights. You've given up your right to live and the earth takes you, Gaia takes you, she takes you back, back into the womb. You become ants, plants, whatever, you're donating your body, you're donating your, your uh, you're donating your atoms back into the earth. Earth loves you for that. Odin hung himself from a tree, hung himself to the tree and was returned to the earth. And that's where he had found a lot of his enlightenment and then he had come back. And he walked the earth with that new knowledge and he'd come back from the beginning. He'd started from scratch. He wanted to start from scratch. If you want to go all the way back to the beginning, <laughs> you know, to gain knowledge. And then as you move forward, he said that you, he had children and then he didn't have to do that anymore. And through his children's eyes, he was able to see and feel those emotions and teach at the same time to become a great teacher. And he became a wanderer and he wore his hat to cover his face. And he would come in different faces at night and he would have children all over the place. And these children would wake up and they would have these, these abilities. He would have his knowledge or a concept of what he had. He seeded them. And it makes sense to me that women would keep the seeds of the males here. They would keep cells from the males here and take on attributes and, and, and ideas and stuff from males here. That's why I always say women, I tell the gals, be careful who you sleep with. You're going to take that in you. If you have that weak person in you that has no faith, that has nothing to do with anything, that nothing, nothing, no ties to the earth, a zombie, a dead, the dead. You've had sex with the dead. Well, you're going to receive death. It's in your brain already. You got dead cells floating around there. You're going to go insane, mad. You'll take on that person's madness. You got to be careful. And that's just how I see it here in this new magical place. Now, I don't believe in magic. I believe in sorcery because sorcery is, is the, the, it's the energy of the clan. Sorcery is an energy identified as, from a particular group, from, a, from the Irish, from the Scottish. There's a practice thing in folk art, folk lores would be sorcery. Now, magic is more off the Kabbalah crap. Kabbalah. Back to the Abrahamic stuff. It's just, it's the systems of rules and checks and balances. It's spells and blah, blah. And then sorcery comes from the roots. It comes from pagans. It's a true source of energy. It's because it's from the earth and we're living within the earth. And the, there's energy lines always flowing through the earth. And you're going with the flow of it. You're in the streams. And you're absorbing everything as you can get. You do everything you can to absorb the energy around you. You could be blind and still see. You could be deaf and still hear. Believe me, in this place. So, turn off the TV, man. Turn off those things. Put on music, put on organic music, man. Play. Listen to the guitars, man. Listen to the banjos. Listen to the flutes. Listen to the orchestras. Listen to all those things. You don't have to scream into electric guitars, but don't get me wrong. There's a time and place for all of that, too. But you got to move around and explore everything. There's so much here in this new place. So much energy here, man. There's so much to do. 
and then there's nothing to do at all. And you can't try to change things that can't be changed. You can't move an immovable rock when sometimes that rock is doing a job where it's at. And you're angry that you can't move that rock, but that rock is serving a purpose, good or bad, evil or good, yin yang. Sometimes it takes evil to show us what's good, people. So you gotta be careful of what you try to destroy. Not everything is there to lead you into that destruction. I meet oppositions every day, every day. I just got a text from T-Mobile saying that my my uh, method of payment, just now we were talking, when I sat down, it says my method of payment has been declined because they don't accept that. And I don't care because they got paid, it's a lie. That's an opposition. And it's not gonna bother me. It did before, but now it's not. Because I know it's a lie. In this place, pretty much everything is a lie. <laughs> so, be weary of what you get mad at. Some things are supposed to make you angry. Some things are supposed to piss you off. And it's how you react to it. Don't get me wrong. You fight. <laughs> Don't give up. But understand what it is. And then absorb that bravery to move into that battle. Hmm. I mean what I said about cowards. And I meant it when I meant it, I was a coward. So, I think this is long enough. I'm sure Home Slice won't be over there when I go back. Finish my walk. He knows, I know. I'm not stupid in this place, guys. None of us are. I want to thank you to the people that send me puzzles and stuff to figure out. It really helps, man. My brain is always working. I can't turn it off. I've got adult ADD. I can't watch movies. I can't watch television. All I can do is run around and I look forward to some things that come on that gives me puzzles to play with and just, man, those are important too, man. And I always try to put codes in mine too. I put codes in and these people know my codes too and it's a game we all play and everybody watch each other's stuff and enjoy each other's stuff with smiles and laughter and don't be sad. <laughs> always think of the positive. Even when somebody looks sad, it might be a game. She was still over there. <laughs> oh, I talked this one at 17 minutes. Jeez. I might just keep this one.